Good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Today, I did a lot of stuff. Oh, last night, I uh, implemented a quick little uh, elevator system. And I was having a hard time trying to figure out, you know, how to toggle this thing with like a button up there and whatnot. So, what I ended up doing was making like a quick little uh, T flip flop system where a dropper, this one is going in this direction. This one that this uh, redstone link is attached to is going up. And this dropper up top is going into the hopper, which automatically dispenses it into the dropper. The drop hopper on this side sends a, tells the comparator, hey, let's work. And the comparator says, hey, do my thing. Which the, then control holds this gear shift, which changes the direction and of, oh, come on. Of this sticky mechanical piston. Cool. Good. Because I spent a long time trying to figure that out. <laughs> oh boy. Anywho. Uh, so yeah. That's working beautifully. Let me uh, just set this up real quick. So this way I can call the elevator. Oh. Wrong frequency. There we go. Switch that to a button. Oh beautiful. Perfect. Now then. Uh, Pro tip. Do not go on these elevators when you're shrunk. Because, believe it or not, yeah, it actually, uh, the way how the game works is that it calculates fall damage based on distance traveled. So, for example, let's say you're dropping from a two-block height. No damage. Anything higher than four... Three or four blocks, you take some damage. Anything higher than, let's say, 20 blocks without, let's say, the free runners, you're gonna die. Basically. So, uh, with that said, I think I wanna put this, like, I don't know, behind the wall over here? Yeah, wouldn't hurt. Yep. Perfect. Now let's see if the button on top works. Ugh. Sweet. Whew. Now then. Um uh, oh, also I <laughs> uh I got my whole system back up and running. Um all of this is actually uh like all these gear ships work just fine. I had to do some uh behind the scenes work with these crushing wheels because one has to rotate this way in other words clockwise and this one has to rotate counterclockwise makes sense i don't know so yeah that's what i've been doing all night and it works pretty well actually um aside from this i gotta set recipes because otherwise, it'll start grinding the ingots into nuggets, which I'm not a huge fan of, but eh. So, let me see if I can preify this room. Make it look good. Um, let me go get my stuff, actually. Yeah, and that I should really slow down. Eh, I'll do it later. Hmm, actually. I could do the exact same thing with this. Downstairs. Wait. Can I? Hmm. You know what? Let me go get the, uh... Stuff. No, no. If I do a Tifa pop, then I wouldn't need this lever, which means I can do whatever I want. <gasps> Alright, so here's my elevator. Right here. Here's the comp... Here's the redstone link. So in that case, huh, I would have to do some something weird. So this would have to go like around here-ish. Oh boy, I don't have that much real estate hey, up here. Yeah, gotta be tight. That's for sure. Anywho, so let's see. On my other screen, I've got a, a picture of it. Let's see. So this goes here. This goes here. 
this goes like so. Perfect. And now I need the hopper. This and pretty much I, I am, uh, I don't know, an old log. <laughs> and this one right here is going to be the output. Actually, can I raise this one? Yeah, you know what? Let's raise it one. Why not? Uh huh. So this would go into here. Alrighty then. Here. Into here. Let me break this for a sec. Yeah. Into there. Looks good, looks good. Into this. Which then needs a block here for the comparator. And... I think I had the redstone link on one of the blocks. Let me just go and reference that real fast. Um, you know what? I made this hole right here. Might as well use it. Anywho. Yep. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah, I put it in the bottom corner. And this button was just for testing. See if it worked. Which it does beautifully. Alright, so. Yep. I put on the uh, dropper that goes up. Okay. Alright. Yep. Yep. Alright, so this would go here. Oops. Here. And this would go over here. Oh, no, wait, no. The configurator. 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 This one. Which means I technically don't need this guy. Well, at least for now. Um, hmm. But, yeah. So, that. Okay, good tie. Good thing, I just did that. Anywho, um, oh, here's my hole. Here's my hole. Oh, no! Oh, oh, that's easy fix. Here, here, frequency one, button. Well, that was easy. Ooh, actually, I could put like an elevator button here. Or, actually? Now I'm curious. Just, just curious. Would this break the button? Nope. Feels weird though. Yeah. Hmm. Where can I put all the immersive engineering stuff? That was the question. Cause IE is not a small mod, <laughs> real estate wise. It's like Create. It needs a lot of space. I mean, let's be honest here. Yeah, that I'm going to slow down. I mean, this is everything, but if I wanted to automate any of this, I would have to tear this whole thing down and just, yeah. Like, I mean, this I can automate easily. This I could probably, I don't know. Alrighty then. So, everything you need to know about immersive engineering is in the engineer's manual. In order to make this thing, you just need to use a book and a lever. Not that terrible if you can find leather and paper. But let's get started. Ow! What? That was 
strangely perfect timing. I thought the book bit me. Why is Spires like climbing this thing? So let's get started with an engineer's manual. So what's cool about this thing is that you can actually type in whatever you want. And a little thing, that's a little nod to the old flippy uh, system back in uh, Windows, that was 98, will appear. So one of the machines that you'll want to make sooner or later is what's called the crusher. And that's what this thing looks like. So basically the crusher is your way of ore doubling. Uh, one of the machines that you'll want to get at, uh, started on is what's called the uh, Coke Oven. In order to make this thing, you need four bricks, four clay, and some kind of sandstone. And you get three of them. You need to make this thing into a three by three by three. So in other words, you need basically three by three and three tall block structure of coke bricks. So that equals to 27 of these things. Perfect. Now, here's the thing about this uh, thing, is that the coke oven is actually, uh, since it's like the very first machine, technically speaking, it doesn't need power, whoops, in order to operate. In fact, it's actually, um, the reason I'm making this thing is actually because this thing produces what's called, a uh, coal coke. And in order for it to produce it, I need coal. Coal. So, let's get some coal. Eh, 32 is good. Let's start. And this takes a long frickin' time. So, getting started on this early in the game would be very, uh, very. Um, so, once that's done, or while that's going, let's try to see if we can make a blast furnace. Or blast bricks, which eats magma blocks, nether bricks, and more bricks. I need to go clay hunting. Um... Magma blocks, I'll have to go oh, and get some. Oh, if I really wanted to, I could just make another, uh, make another one of these, which wouldn't hurt. Um, yeah, for now, I guess I'll just put this here. Yeah. Break that torch. Come with me. Not now, zombie. Okay, all right, now that this is ready, just smack it with a hammer. Cool, and I have yet to make a single one of these coal coke blocks. Oh boy. Hmm. Well, anywho. Um. Ooh, sun's coming up. Nice. So, let's see. So, so the reason that I'm making a uh, coal coke is actually because it's actually more efficient for the blast furnace to use coal coke. Because you just use regular coke, you're just, or coal, you're just wasting uh, coal. Oh, it's going to be less efficient. Whereas coal coke is, gives you like a one-to-one. -one. Uh, regular coal will give you like, naive, and like, let's say... 0.8 to 1. If that makes sense. Like, in terms of, like, burn time. Yeah, so it's going to be a little bit more efficient, but you're better off just making, like, a ton of uh, coal coke. And the reason for all this is to actually make steel. Immersive engineering's way. Now... There's a little trick here that I can use. Nope. Don't take that. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think for now...
I'm just going to quickly show you how to make uh, immersive engineering steel. And I don't believe you can use charcoal in the... Ha! Huh. I did not know that you can use charcoal in this thing. I thought it was disabled. Huh. Oh, I thought that uh, wasn't a thing. Well, that just blew my mind. Wow. Yeah, it's not even like halfway done. It's used up one charcoal already. Still going. Still going. There we go. So this is how you make immersive engineering steel and a little bit of a byproduct called slag. Slag is actually used for making concrete from immersive engineering. Or if you crush it, you can just make it sand. Or if you put it in a mixer, you can make liquid concrete. Anywho, so steel is your basic uh, ingredient for immersive engineering. Or, yeah, immersive engineering uh, stuff. Like the bayonet you can use to upgrade your guns. Uh, it's a mechanism. Uh, capacitors are basically your energy storage for this mod just like how energy cubes are for mechanism but honestly we they don't hold that much you're better off just going uh, straight to HV tier in other words high voltage that's another thing though that uh, I haven't mentioned is that unlike other mods that just go from like oh if you upgrade this uh, machine or if you upgrade your cabling, the machines will still work. Not with immersive engineering. Immersive engineering uh, actually uses a voltage system that it goes from high to medium to low. So basically, your high voltage stuff, it could work on certain machines, but... Um... <clears throat> For example, well, you know, high voltage wiring can only work with high voltage uh, connectors. Um, how do I put this? Like each tier of each tier of voltage stays with each tier of voltage, meaning that low tier can only work with low tier connectors. Medium tier wiring can only work with medium tier connectors. And will you please? The way how a mechanism actually transfers its energy is by using wire connectors and wire coils. These wire coils allow you to transfer things like energy or redstone over distances. Now that distance is like something like 16 blocks I believe. But that's still a pretty good range. In fact, I actually showed you guys a little bit of it down here, I think. Um, where's my shrinking device? Here it is. Yeah. Yeah, down here. So these LV wire connectors are transferring energy over this orange string, which is an LV or low voltage wire coil. This wire coil will actually hurt me if I can get in the right position. Ow, 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 da, da, da. Yeah. So that's a new thing in uh, immersive engineering, actually. Um, back in one dot, uh, Back in like some of the earlier versions of like 1.12. Also, what is going on with this thing? Is it because of the jetpack? Nope, it's just Minecraft freaking out. Okay, I got my brother wiggy around. Uh, that works. Anywho. So, the feature of the wires electrocuting electrocuting players is actually a new-ish thing. 
Uh, cause back in the day, hey, back like early 1.12 slash 1.7, you could just pass through wires and not care. But now it's actually going to harm you. Now you could use this for things like mob farms, but it does use up a tiny bit of energy in order to damage you or the mob, like zombies or skeletons or what have you. Is it going to be effective? Well, in low tiers, you just saw that it took me a few seconds to die. But the higher the tier, the more voltage. Does that make sense? In other words, the more pain you will feel. High voltage is your max energy transfer. In other words, your max pain. <laughs> Anywho, um... So that's one thing that you got to be careful about when you're building your base um, and being wary of how you do your wiring. And what's cool, though, is that, um, if I remember correctly, I think... I think I have some... Ooh, yes, I do. So just to demonstrate real quick, because Immersive Engineering is like one of those mods that kind of does a wire uh, droopage kind of thing. Let me just connect these real quick. See how it droops? That's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Um, but keep in mind, no, there's no electricity going through this wire, so I can just do this and not care. Um, let me just break this. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. All right, so that's it. Looks pretty interesting, especially when you have like a ton of wires going from like one connector to like a bunch of relays. So, with that said, so each tier has its own relay because the connectors cannot, under any circumstance, uh, have like multiple connections. So, for example, let's say I were to do this to this. I cannot attach another wire here because it's already connected. Relays, however, don't have that uh, issue. Relays can go with like multiple wires in one block. So for example, let's say this was a relay. I can have like seven or 12 wires on this one connection going out in all directions. Now, here's the thing though, oh, about uh, the wiring, though, it's actually pretty realistic, meaning that, uh, let me just use two of you guys real quick. So let's say, hey, I had a wire going here. If I put a block down, the wire breaks. See? So if I were to try doing this, it'll actually tell me, hey, this block's in the way. Get rid of it. So, yeah, that's one thing that you got to be careful about. Um... Actually, yeah, that's actually a pretty good uh, starting point for this. Well, I'm going to head out. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.